Rob's fixture shop today. I've got something I hope will be easy. It's a radio. And um, my friend Tracy gave it to me and she said uh, it's from her aunt Shelly. And uh, so it has a note and it says after you turn it on, it takes a few minutes to warm up before any sound. Just turn the tuner dial to tune in something uh, country. About two. I'm not sure what that means, but it's a General Electric. Hope your family is doing well. So that's the note on the top. And apparently she had it for quite a while. And it sounds like it still works, but uh, I'm sure it's going to need a little bit of work. And uh, yeah, so let's take a look at it and have some fun fixing it up. Oh, the other thing is, is it's got this big crack here. And I'm going to see if I can... Um, fix that up. There's another crack on the other side down here. This one I can glue, but this one I'm going to have to fill a little bit. It does look like the paper underneath is missing, so we've got some work ahead of us. And if you look at the, the cord, <laughs> it's got this crazy... Uh, I mean, I used to, when I was a kid, we put so many of these on stuff as the cord would get wrecked, and this was just such a common thing, but yeah, we'll probably replace this cord as well. All right, so let's take a look. It's got this nice antenna on the outside. Uh, it looks like there's a number there. Here we can see the big crack. And uh, that's going to be a little tough to fix, but we'll see what we can do. I think it's this nice Bakelite cover. It's missing the back cardboard as well. And then on the bottom, it's missing the paper. It often has like a tube chart or whatever, but the front is really very cool looking. And uh, we'll clean this up and get it looking nice. And uh, nice white knobs. And uh, yeah, that's a good look at it. All right, so I don't see too many screws. I'm going to remove this one right here. But I think that's the only one really holding it in. I think there's supposed to be another kind of plate in here, but it's broken off. So it must have hit along this corner. All right. Got to take the knobs off. Be careful with these, these look pretty nice. And they got these little felt pads behind them, that's cool. Oh, nice. That's pretty nice. The speaker has little clips to unplug it. Yeah. So that... That's plastic, but the speaker looks beautiful. Wow. Yeah, that looks nice and simple. Looks like it's been... This has been turned out a little bit to help with the tuning. Um, but it's a little bit dirty too. I don't know. So I'll have to see if I can find a number on the chassis. Look at that. That's beautiful. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is that if you look at this schematic, so this is a Model 107, and uh, I just had to, I couldn't find any numbers on it. I just had to kind of search around, but. Uh, for one that looked like it. Uh, it looks like it's from about 1948. And so if you look, you know, it's not it's a non-polarized plug and so that means that the chassis can be hot because it can be um, if you look here you're kind of connected straight to the chassis in a number of these places. So if we look at that we have one of our sides of our power plug coming in, it goes to the switch and then from the switch it comes over here and that comes up through here, over here, and then down through uh, the ground. So the way it's currently set up is that what's neutral or ground comes through the switch then goes through the filaments and then through the diode or rectifier and then kind of comes back like that. We're going to change it so that the switch is here. 
and we're also going to use a polarized plug so that we always know that we've got power coming in on this side and neutral coming in on this side. So that's our next step. All right, so one side of the cord comes a switch. So we're, we're going to make that our hot side. Then we have to disconnect this and have our other power come right to here, or our neutral come to here. And let's see. And then from the switch, we're going to come back and come to right here. So let's do that power side first. And I've just got a little computer cable. Okay, so I added this power cord. I added a little plastic thing like that, which is always a pain in the butt. I because you have to drill the usually drill the hole bigger to get that in. <clears throat> and then there's a little crimping tool like this. Um, but I use one of those stepper stepper drill bits to do it, but then so then I have the grounding going right to the chassis, right? And then I have the neutral coming around and then coming to this point here where then it goes to the volume, it goes to here, and then it goes down to um, this little jumper right here, which brings it to here, which brings it down to the chassis through here. And then our power comes out of the switch, comes back to this little red wire, back into pin two right here. And so, that's right here. We're coming in to pin two, we cut this out, we don't need it. And, um, That should be good. So next I want to replace this capacitor right here. And um, that looks like it's a 50 microfarad, 50 microfarad. And uh, all right, so we got these guys. These are about 250 volts, 47 microfarads. And so I'll just have to, I think, so this one goes from here here I think I can just put that across there and this one goes from here let's see that's to ground so I think I can just put that from here to here so that should be pretty easy to do okay, so we'll do this one first going to cut these a little bit long so I don't forget what they are. Huh. This is 30 micro 30 and 30. Well, this one's 50 and 50. I'm going to leave it to 50 and 50. Okay, that's one down. And the other one comes right to comes right here. All right, there we got number two in. Oh. I put shrink wrap around the positive. I think that looks pretty nice. All right, so next I think I'm just gonna go through and replace these, there really aren't that many capacitors in here. <clears throat> so that should be pretty quick. So I'm just going to one by one go through and I'll clip them out 
and solder in some new ones. So it looks like we got all the capacitors replaced. Uh, it was pretty easy, there weren't very many. And uh, there's the wreckage there. And so we'll plug it into my dim bulb tester and um, turn it on and see what we get. All right, let's turn it on. Whoops. Well, there's a good sign our bulb is on. That humming is actually coming from my isolation transformer. So it looks like I'll have to oil up and clean these, the pot potentiometer here. That's sticking, but it sounds great. Um, yeah, I'll see what I can do about that. Okay, so I was having a lot of problems with the, um, the potentiometer here. And I didn't want to take it all out and take it apart. There's no place to really stay spray in the deoxid. So I just drilled a tiny hole very carefully, you know, making sure that I didn't have the stuff in it. And uh, then I was able to spray the deoxid in and then everything's okay. So it sounds pretty good. I don't know, a hundred and... Well, nothing's going to happen all that quickly. because it moves us to Goodyear. With a cash out, then we'll see some rocket mortgage. You can find it. Sorry to take me again. You see, the government plan to create their own show. One Winnipeg farm. Is when the show I would be prepared to be vaccinated. We're hearing from health care providers at the mail. Personalized compassionate care. Women who deserve. Thank you. Earlier this week, after arriving on a flight from the Middle East while on his way back to the Twin City. So it looks like um, it looks like uh, the stations are, you know, the, the good stations are really loud, which is good, um, but the other stations are really low. And I'm wondering if the the, the automatic volume control or AGC, um, we see that right here coming along. <coughs> Here and I'm thinking that one and that's supposed to make the stations kind of all, you know, at a similar volume. And I'm just wondering if maybe these resistors are a little out of tolerance or something, and uh, making it so it's not working as well. And uh, but what you see is you see that kind of the the negative side of these coils, um, this coil and uh, this coil and this coil are kind of provided by the automatic volume control line. And um, so we can see that if we hook our voltmeter up. So if I 
touch that AGC line. We can see that <clears throat> when we don't have a station, teams, the number seven Florida Gators, the number six Oklahoma Sooners. Jordan so when we have a good station, that comes up to right around minus man. two volts. And then we have a no station or a low station. Let me go on the other side of that resistor. needs to step up tonight but outside of him no one on this roster so let's check those those resistors so I just have my handy Radio Shack resistor card because that schematic I have doesn't the values don't always match what we have here, but um, here we've got about 2.7 meg instead of the 2.2, uh, and then um, the other guy that's in this line is this one right here, and that's yellow, purple, green. which is uh, 4.7 meg. And that's kind of off too. I mean, it's not hugely off, <clears throat> but I think I'll replace these two and see if that helps the, the AGC work a little bit better. So interesting, I had... Uh, <clears throat> Um, <clears throat> realistic looking um, 2.2s I must have gotten somewhere. Well, that seemed to make a little bit of difference. Not as much as I thought. Cloudy for most of tonight. Going to get down in the single digits, maybe about 9 degrees in the mark. 27. Yeah, I don't know what the deal is. Last night I was bringing in stations from all over. I had some from Canada. Uh, it was quite amazing. It was, seemed like there were stations everywhere on the dial. And tonight is different. <clears throat> okay, so we're going to start aligning it. And um, so we have our signal generator. I'm just setting it to um, 455 kilohertz, which is an intermediate frequency. And then I have um, the scope hooked up to the speaker. And then I have um, I'm just going through a little capacitor. And then I'm going into the uh, output of the tuning coil, which should go into that first tube. And uh, If I turn on the signal generator, we see it coming through, and we're going to watch our RMS there. All right, so nothing fancy here. I'm just going to go to the first transformer here and just try to peek it a little bit. right on. Okay, that one's 
sounds pretty good. Okay, so now we're going to try to align the, the dial in front and the problem is is that you know you've got the dial here and um, <clears throat> I guess I could measure from here to here but I don't know I don't know how I'm gonna <laughs> I don't know how I'm gonna line all this I don't know let me try putting it back in and see if I can see what's what Okay, so that's 600. Okay, so that's 17. So here we've marked uh, 1.7 megahertz and then down here we have 600 kilohertz and so I've set my signal generator up to um, 1.7 uh, megahertz and then hooked straight to the you know just bypass the antenna coming in through a capacitor and um, so let's let me show you how to align it then. so let's align it um, you just we'll tune until we we're pretty close, right? We're pretty close. I'm going to move it right on. And then um, we'll adjust our trimmer cap here on the oscillator. To our right on. That looks good. And then um, we'll just check then to see where we are as far as the 600. I don't think we have an adjustment for that. They were pretty far off on that. Oh, <laughs> uh, let me change it to 600 kilohertz then. We're picking up right on, so it's really aligned pretty well. Um, yeah. Okay, well, the radio seems to be working great. It seems like it's all aligned, but here's something that's kind of problematic is that the uh, case is broken, it's cracked here. This is going to be easy to glue, right? Uh, yeah, that's going to be easy to glue. But here, you got a big piece that's broken out. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to Put some fiberglass in here as kind of a background to cut as a backing and then um, put some resin on it get it to kind of set up and then I'm gonna see if I can bondo this do um, yeah I used to do body work when I was in college and so it's always fun to use bondo so I think if I can get the bondo in there I think I can match this curve and um, get it to line up and I don't know maybe I can color match it and get it looking okay. I mean, it's never going to be great, you know. I mean, but 
I mean, but because that's a lot of damage there. But yeah, let's let's give that a try. Okay, so on this side, I'm just going to use some super glue because I think that's all I'll really need. Okay, so just going to take some of this fiberglass mat here. Like I say, I've never tried this before. Actually, that looks pretty good. So now I'm just going to mix up some resin and uh, brush it on there. Alright, well then I'll just let that I'll just let that harden up and uh, then we'll put some bondo on the top of it and, and shape it. I don't know, we'll see how it turns out. Okay, so I think that turned out pretty good. Hard as a rock. And it does tend to hold the two pieces together nicely. So I'm just going to sand that a little bit. See if there's a so there's not a waxy kind of top to it. And then Got some Bondo. I'm going to mix up and see if I can kind of fill that and then I'll try sanding it and cleaning it up and then i got to figure out some way to kind of match the color too. I don't know. I've never done this before but we'll see how well it works. Alright. Mix it up. Quite get why the cream hardener is not red. That seems not very traditional. <coughs> I just love the smell of Bondo. It's not defies explanation, but uh, always something fun going on when there's Bondo around. Okay. 
So now let's see how well we can get that in there. Yeah, so it's only been about five minutes already hardening up. That's good. And it'll just be soft like this for a short time. That's okay because we can get the rest with sanding. Got a little bit of a curve here. Okay, so that looks pretty good. I'll I got a couple of low spots here and over here and one right there so I'll just mix up just a tiny bit more and um, I think then that's a, then we'll be good actually I think that looks really great all right I'm at um, my cousin's shop uh, this is Jim he's an artist and um, so the bad news is I dropped it when I was bringing it over so I added another crack so that's gluing but so Jim, here's what I'm looking at. Is that so? There's this big crack in here, yeah. right? And this is bake light, I think. It looks like it's bake light. And it's and it's really pretty. It's got kind of two colors in it. It's kind of yeah. I don't know what you think of that, but but then there was this big piece missing here. So I fiberglassed it and then bonded it up. Yeah. And so really, what I just was hoping you could do is kind of match the color mm -hmm. a little bit. Mm -hmm. And I've sanded this with 600. Okay. But I don't know. I, if I were you, just to, and also this is when you're all done with it, I think I would probably do the whole thing with 600 and then just spray the whole thing with a glass run. The thing then is, I don't know down. whether it's got a paint on it or what it's got. Well, it it almost hurt it though. If you've already, yeah. you're already able to do that. Does that make sense? Yeah, I think then that. You can spray it with varnish. Yeah, I think that's maybe what I'll do because yeah. after I cracked even, it, even. yeah, after I cracked the stupid thing, <clears throat> then um, it leaves the ridge and I want to be able to sand that ridge yeah. down. I mean, it's not worth very much, but I thought it'd be cool to get it kind of in its natural state. The thing is, I didn't know how to mix the brown. You know what you I know, mean? I got brown here, but you, you, I for, tried using... For those at home how to make brown, the best way to do it is mix green and orange, to tell you the truth. Green and orange? Yeah. Oh. It makes them... Because I remember when I was a kid, you know, you'd try to color and then color again, and eventually you'd end up with brown, brown so... Because they're mixing those... You know, whatever things. you were doing kind of it's would end greens. up looking like poop. It's the greens that are mixing with the... The, the more radish yellow colors. Yeah. That's how you get brown. If you mix together any complementary colors, you also get brown. Uh huh. But they're all a little different feel. Huh. But you think about it, if you mix together <clears throat> green and orange, you're actually mixing together blue, yellow, red, and yellow too. There's more yellow mixed This in. radio is kind of interesting because it's, it's a very simple radio. Mm -hmm. But like the other night, I was picking up a station in Canada. Oh, wow. 
And uh, is it a regular radio? AM. Yeah, it's but it's not like, like a one of those uh, super AM radio type things that picks up more stuff. No, right? no, not not oh. short wave or whatever. Yeah. But um, yeah, it was just a home home radio. But I don't know, it's pretty cool. Yeah, it's really I mean, cool. all the tubes worked and uh, really cool. yeah. And I don't know what we're gonna get here, so I'm just gonna try a couple of variations on this before I get settled on one. But here's a little bit darker brown. I'll put a little bit of violet in there. I think that might help too. I tried there. staining it with dark walnut stain, but the yeah. Bondo would not you accept, accept stain. stain. No. I thought, you know, maybe it's a, it's a little bit porous. I thought it might. When I used to work at a refinishing shop, they, I, I was the painter and they knew that. I used to have to paint all the green back in whenever we did Bondo because you couldn't stain it. it would, yeah. And they decided, you know, they have little kits and things, but none of them could do it very well. Yeah. And so I was in charge of doing all that. It was like really fun painting the green back in. It was cool. All right. So right now it's really dark. So I'm, I just start out with that. Whoa. So that that. All right. What's that a hip bone? Is that a hip bone from a cow or what? That's a cow. Yeah, it was a science teacher, got it from a, I believe a student gave it to her, and then when she left the school, I said, what are you going to do with that? She said, you're taking it home. I said, <laughs> I was very happy about that. <sighs> okay. And that looks a lot like it. So okay. what were these two colors? This is oh, I just mixed the brown, I mixed some violet, and I mixed a little bit of the reds into some black. So I started with black because I had to get really dark. Okay. So I'm just going to try it and see what we end up looking like. So right there, it's a little light. Okay. Mm -hmm. But we can pull some of this dark back in now on the edge of it. And it actually is getting closer already. See that? It's not too bad. Let's just lay that down as our first coat just to mm -hmm. kind of get it so it soaks in. <clears throat> It's actually not bad. Let's let it dry though, because it'll change color when it dries. Slightly. This was uh, 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 Tracy, who works at the school district, gave it to me. She thought it was perfect for me, but she got it from her aunt, and her aunt included instructions on how to Tune in the country radio station. <laughs> Instructions on how to do it. All right, so we're going to let that dry for just a second before I attempt to layer it again, right? Because I'm going to go a little bit darker. I can see it when I get it right next to it. It's close, but a little bit light. But let's just let that kind of sit for a minute. Then I'll add some more black to it. All right, where did that black paint go? Intense. The intensity is super low sucks all the life out of color so if you have black it tends to do that so you got to over mix other colors into it hmm. otherwise you lose all the sense of like, so you start with the time. color and then you add yeah. black as necessary yeah. but you want to always whenever you're mixing black to darken the color they always say like use like twice as much of the main base color mm -hmm. so you don't lose intensity because you will lose intensity for sure when you do it all right let's try a really dark black with some red in it just on top see what that does because it's got these cool swirlies mm -hmm. in it. You know, I don't know if that's from the plastic. I'm trying to I think. let it dry a little bit and we can do some of that on top. It'd be kind of cool. But there's even little hints of like almost black or deep, deep dark. You know, like a burnt umber or raw umber kind of feel to it. But I'm going to let it dry a little bit. Actually, you know what? I might use my hair dryer. I need a little picture. And that's the whole thing about acrylic is that when it dries matte, it doesn't have the same vibrancy that it will when it's wet. Right. Or shiny. So it needs to have a varnish over it. Yeah. And you can see when I get over there with the wet paint, it's really close again, right? Right. Yeah. Let's get that to go away, all that little. Don't worry, I'll go back over that again with some dark spots. Get that marble look. Color is there though. You know, once it dries, you won't even notice it's there. Yeah. I don't think. 
Then if it's too rough, I suppose I could sand the... Varnish. The varnish, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it looks pretty good, yeah, considering how the damage it was. Yeah. So, if I don't drop it again like I did today. Where's the other crack you just put in it? So, right here. When you dropped it? Yeah, when I dropped it, I put a crack in here. And I glued it with super glue, but it made me pretty... There was... Oh, 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 you didn't just drop it at, on my house. But you said no, you no, did. no, I dropped it at oh, home. Oh, okay. Getting it into the I car. Okay. So. You should be able to sand that down. Yeah. And then I think when you varnish it, you won't see it. Yeah, I mean, it depends, yeah. Because I think the the striations here are actually part of the mm -hmm. the plastic itself. So mm -hmm. I'm going to, I'll go on the back there and I'll put a little fiberglass mm -hmm. just to kind of fiberglass mesh with epoxy or resin. Cool. But yeah, look how nice that speaker is. It looks brand really new. Nice, beautiful. And that's not something you put in? No. Oh, wow. That's beautiful. Yeah. So this has been sitting in somebody's living room or yeah. something. It's not been up in like an attic. <laughs> And then you can see there, if you look in that crack right there, mm -hmm. you can see where I put the fiberglass mesh in there yep. as, yep. as a base for the Bondo. Sure. So. Cool. So here it is. So I tried a bunch of different things to get the this to look nice. And um, what I ended up doing that worked is I used some Minwax uh, polyurethane semi-gloss. I sprayed two coats on and... Um, here you can see the the part that I painted. You can still see it a little bit, but it's not too bad, I don't think. Um, I sprayed two coats on, and one of the things about this plastic is it just really shows every imperfection, every speck of dust and everything. So what I did is I took that varnish and then I wet sanded it with 600 and polished it with um, some of this uh, plastic polish. And that really seemed to bring that, that sheen out and uh, you really see that beautiful uh, way that, that kind of the two colors of the plastic come out. So I think it turned out just great. Well, that's our video. I, you know, this was a pretty easy fix. We just did the basics, which are, you know, replace the capacitors and you know, check the resistors for tolerance. And, um, you know, it just came back to life. And, you know, the case, of course, took me a lot longer, but it was the first time I'd done one like this. So it took me a little bit of figuring out what was going on, how to get that finish looking really great. But I think it came out like a million bucks. So it was all in all, it was kind of a fun project. And uh, so I appreciate you coming along for the ride. If you liked the video, please hit like and subscribe. And thanks for coming along.